Ready Player Will. Welcome back, Visions fans. Ready Player Will here. This is the Duran in-depth character review. Pretty standard things to expect today. The character overview, some stat overview, the report card, a should you pull, or in this case, should you build section. Some general thoughts, the job overview, where we'll go through the abilities themselves, the TMR, and all the rest of the good stuff toward the end there. But to kick things off with the character overview, brand new wind unit added to the game with the unique main job of the Paladin from Trials of Mana. There is a longer name for it, but not worth saying here he is part of the sword knight group so he does equip swords and equips shields armors helms and accessories so he does have an extra element of heavy armor that he can equip in the form of shields he does have a move of three jump of one as a 100 cost unit and i do recommend him at 50 faith you might dabble going a little bit higher depending upon how you want his limit break to land because there's some stun percentage chance on there. Not to mention being a tanky oriented character, maybe you're pairing him with a support, in which case a higher faith number gives him more healing. But then again, that also means more damage and more status effects. So a little more time in place, but because we're entering a very magic oriented, I wouldn't say the word meta, but magic oriented selection of characters that are coming out, Probably not recommended to go higher than 50 faith today. Now the max range on his job is four squares away, so definitely a shorter range unit that actually bodes well for him. He's got one AOE on the main job and three single target abilities. Uh, resistance wise, only the minus 10% to strike, so certainly be on the lookout for that. But overall, pretty good resistances to the others. The only one I might be concerned about is that 5% to magic, where there's enough magic and perils in the game incoming that that could actually chunk him for a fair amount of damage. And that's not his strength, so that's okay. We just need to know his niche, if you know what I mean. From a mastery ability perspective they gave him 20 percent slash res pen permanently 10 accuracy and 10 percent debuff weakening and that 140 ability is 20 aoe res pen which helps a little bit he's not an aoe type attacker for the most part as you can obviously see by the you know breakout of his abilities but this does help uh, and he does get 15 unit res and 30 percent reaction block rate also very important for his potential damage output and so let me pause here because uh, there's some nuance to this character that he can be a tank a little bit. He's got a passive ability that will give him five hate, which means he can take the first three hits, but he's got no other way to replenish it. It's not anywhere else in the kit, but you don't have to have that passive on. So there is some discretion on how you want to build him. So stat wise, you got to consider him as maybe either both a tank or a DPS or realistically a blend of both. He really shouldn't be a meat shield. He should be able to do some modicum amount of damage in the fight. So that is going to be kind of a recurring theme as we'll see here. But as we get into the stats, base stats, uh, he's off the charts here on base HP. I don't even have a category for units higher than 5,000. I didn't think I'd see the day. Engelbert for the longest time was the highest base HP in the game. He was an outlier and I had to reform all my HP stats because of units like Engelbert, but here comes Duran, the highest base HP in the game at 5,017. Base attack also pretty good in that second highest bucket. Base dexterity also relatively high considering, you know, we say he's a tank, but he's not really. You don't want to think of him that way. He should be doing a fair amount of damage in the fight if built properly. And luck-wise, he's kind of middle of the pack, but definitely skews higher at that 179. So not a strength of his, but it is certainly still in a really good spot. For the total stat analysis here, I wouldn't really say there's any weaknesses. Obviously, his attack stat doesn't jump off the charts, and that's totally fine, but everything else, dexterity and luck, certainly in a good enough spot for me, considering he's kind of that hybrid blend of both roles. Now, for the agility points, this is probably the first overall like, weakness, I would say, in the character. He's at about 81 agility, and he's got no passives to increase it, so he stays at that 81 agility, which, for DPS units, that's a really bad thing. For tank units, not as bad of a thing because it means your buffs can last a little bit longer, but also depends if you're getting dispelled or not. So the, this is kind of something that I'm not in love with, but certainly not the end of the world. The rest of the stats here, the crit hit rate in Naily is actually much higher than I would have thought. That's in a pretty good spot around that like 96%. Crit avoidance rate's kind of average, it's whatever, but he's not really known for crit evasion. He's got a different kind of mechanic, which we'll talk about soon. His accuracy, not in the worst spot, quite frankly. He does have a passive that can bump that up by 25%. I would recommend having that on there's just no worse feeling in the game than missing on a unit that you shouldn't and evasion he's definitely on the very bottom of the gradient i do not consider him an evade unit the luck stats not there his agility stats not there so really not going to happen even if like 
it seems like it'd be okay. It's really not. Now for the report card overall, I'm not going to go through every single thing here, but a couple of things to touch upon. Overall effective HP and survivability is actually pretty darn good. That health pool is absolutely enormous. The reason why that base HP doesn't translate to a much higher effective HP stat though, really comes down to the fact that he's got no AoE wide res anywhere within him. That's the one stat innately that really bumps up a lot of these characters from an effective HP perspective. Now that being said, the survivability is still good. He's got two different ways to conjoin two different honeycomb barriers. He's got a great HP physical damage barrier, a really great double heal back mechanic, which we'll talk about in the dropping kit, a very high defense enemy, which definitely skews more anti-physical than anti-magic. There's really not a whole lot in his kit that's anti-magic at all, other than those honeycomb barriers. The damage for me, overall not bad. There's not a lot of defense pen, but we're going to go through that damage on the next slide a little more. But overall, I think it's pretty decent. Not what you're used to seeing, but it's certainly not bad either. The agility is average. The accuracy is B+, plus, it's serviceable, no guaranteed hit, so that is something to call out. The evasion is whatever, even the movement, there's no move or jump capabilities, which is kind of sad. You would like to see a unit that could be a tank have a move plus one option somewhere, but it is not there, so he's a D for movement. The auto ease of use for me is a C, and for me that's really just because it can be kind of tough, I think, in trying to determine how to build him as a tank or a damage dealer. How much tankiness is enough tankiness, and how much damage is enough damage. That's going to be something that I think some people struggle with, so... Although the AI is certainly nice, I think the team building and building him might be a little more difficult than some are used to, but it's not the end of the world. The game disruption for me is a C, and I do think he could be an excellent pairing with Shreka, but the prevalence of how much magic there is really kind of lessens the impact that I think he'll have current day, particularly because there's really not a, a slew of Earth units running around at the moment that he really could come in and have some very easy high impact. I just don't think it's really there. The passives, B+, I overall think really great versatility of second passive options i absolutely love his first passive though the counter abilities are really bad quite frankly i don't think they're good the overall dropping kit b minus it is really good he does obviously skew much higher on physical damage but i personally think this is a unit that needs dispel seal to really be great if he's in a team that doesn't have it i think his value drops pretty significantly so it does limit him a little bit the final grade though is a b plus he is a great staple to wind and sword knight we are kind of on the trend of seeing the potential reduction of Sephiroth teams with Exia coming into the fold and all these new units that kind of pick them apart in different ways. I do think he's a great unit for the wind and fire connection too, uh, just to bring a new gen unit into the fold where wind has the, you know, the, the anti-magic Dario tank, which is kind of underwhelmed and on the other side of things, now maybe Duran can fill a different niche for that group. Now, general thoughts, The this relates back to the damage here. The defense pen is severely limited. You can get 20 from his vision card, assuming you're wearing it and have pulled it. If you didn't, that's a pretty big, that's kind of stinky. 10% uh, from his trust stone passive. His 120 ability does have 50 defense pen, but it's just for that cast. So defense pen's honestly not great, but he does have other forms of uh, damage capabilities with a ton of options for slash res pen, which he can get very high to in a variety of different ways. He does have that 20 AOE res pen, which certainly does help. And his main offensive abilities is a 60% unit crush on a select two. So that's really the combination of how he wants to do his damage. So not the end of the world. He does have excellent overall bulk though, but it is more physical than magical. He can reduce critical damage received. And this is kind of a unique mechanic that was introduced back with Zidane. I think it was. And the basic idea is that if you get critically hit, you will take a percentage less damage overall. So the general concept here is that you don't have to worry about any kind of like crit evasion for this unit. And obviously this does help a lot in the follow-up attack meta where critical hits are rather abundant, but it basically just means that he can, if he gets critically hit, that damage will be reduced by 12% if you're equipping a certain passive up to 20% if you have the passive and his weapon equipped. So certainly something that's kind of nice there. He does have a 11% honeycomb barrier after his second buff at ranges three to six so each range between three and six is an increase of 11 percent damage reduction so at three squares away he'll take 33 percent less damage at six squares away he'll take 66 percent less damage and that's both physical and 
magical. He does have some decent utility here with an aura that gives 20 defense and 20 unit res to the units around him. He can dispel protect on a cross-shaped AoE. He can dispel courage on the select too. He's got a 25 AoE res buff to allies. And then just in terms of that survivability, they've given him a unique new mechanic here too, where he can restore a percentage of his HP. I don't know the exact percent, but it's called medium uh, in the game description. He can do that twice if he's dealt damage of 40% more of his HP. And so the idea is that if he, these numbers aren't accurate, but if he was at 10,000 HP and someone hit him for 4K damage, he would replenish a percentage of his max HP. And you could do that twice. So it's a way to kind of help him survive any of these things, like let's say high magic damage, or maybe someone nukes him for a ton of magic damage. Well, he's going to recover a decent part of that. Very interesting. Now, uh, should, should you build? To me, the answer is eh, maybe. Sure, but to me, there's really no rush. I don't think there's anything he does current day that's going to revolutionize your fights and again, there's some context here that really depends on your sword knight resources. If that's not a class of characters or group of vision cards that you've invested in, he's not going to do anything really special for you. Uh, sure, mono wind potentially could be an option, but obviously mono element is a little more dicey to run nowadays, particularly with Gilgamesh still kind of a looming threat around there. But I also do think it does depend if you have Shereka, because I do think their pairing is their best synergy. If you have not built and are using Shereka, you're going to not hit his ceiling in my opinion in the near term i do think he's still good to level to get to level 99 just for mind sphere farming if you are building angela or crimson wizard that certainly does help from the barracks and the chocobo expedition but this is uh a maybe it's not a reflection of how good or bad he is it's more just a reflection of like current economic resources what's your account look like where your rank is what are your enemies that you're seeing most often so it's kind of a combination of those things so no exact answer but still hopefully that helps now, kind of getting through this as fast as I can. I know we're at 12 minutes. For the passive abilities, this top one, absolute must. I love this one. The other ones, you have some chances. This third one is the option of making him that tank of five hate. You don't need it, to be honest. You can go with something like Nightblade Mastery, which I would prefer if you're going for a more typical DPS uh, role, where I love the 25% accuracy. I just think you need that right now in the current state of the game with how much luck percent there is kind of going around. Obviously, the attack buff is certainly nice too, but I do think any selection of those is fine. You could entertain the Knight's Lore for that 40 slash res pen passive, but I think there are alternative ways to get it that I don't prefer it over these other two that I've highlighted. Over the counter abilities, this is where I think it's like kind of bad. Uh, this is not the worst ability in that it's a preemptive four range slash, but it's a 30% proc chance, and that's really poor in the current state of the game. So, oh, this is okay. This is very underwhelming, and the others are also really nothing special either. The main job buffs, that teammate buff, is where he can pass on the potential to reduce enemy defense pen to himself and allies. It's courage, it's AoE res, it's some AP restoration, and it is his aura ability, which he will use first here. The self buff is that physical barrier, it's the extra honeycomb, and it's also that heal back mechanic here that I was kind of alluding to in the general thoughts. The main job offensive abilities, again, very heavily uh, unit res oriented in terms of his select two, which is really good. This is a great ability, absorbs some damage. He's got a couple other abilities here that give him defense in the mid fight. So as you're reducing enemy defense pen, if he's gaining his own defense, this is why I like the dispel seal of a teammate where this is great if he can generate that defense, but if it's going to get dispelled anyway in the next hit, really doesn't mean anything. So that, that's kind of an important synergy. The 120 ability is very interesting from just kind of like a single target nuke perspective with the defense pen and the decrease of chain resistance the chain resistance is kind of hit or miss it depends on your teammates but wind does have enough multi-hit units and sword knight does too that you might be able to capitalize on this and even Duran in his kit as some multi-hits. They're not on the main job, but they are coming. And for the Limit Break, this is one of them. It is a double hit on an AoE. It will not hit your teammates. There is no friendly fire, so this is very nice that in the middle of a battle, he will walk up to an enemy and boom, maybe inflict stun at that 67% chance. We've seen how impactful that certainly can be. For the rest of the subjobs, this Trials of Mana subjob for the Paladin, I think this is more of like a nod to whatever his lore was in the main game. I don't think the Slash and Peril is any good, quite frankly, compared to what else he has in his kit. And this buff is really not great either. I think it's very redundant with the rest of his kit. I don't like this subjob at all. 38% uh, Slash and Peril is not nearly as a good as it used to be. And for a variety of reasons, debuff weakening, higher slash resistance values in the game, 
whole bunch of things. But for the other sub drops, I think it's debatable. I do like the, the knight sub drop because this to me is where I'd rather get the extra slash res pen. This Trinity break ability, obviously as a like tank esque character where you want to have some utility. The agility break and whatnot is certainly nice, but that slash res pen is great. I don't hate this buff here either, though, if you're considering third buff options for him. It really just comes down to, again, whether it's uh, Dispel Seal or not, because two of the major things here are dispellable. The debuff resistance to all elements, which uh, that type of imperil is something that we see on the Sephiroth limit break and the Joom limit break. And the healing power of 30 certainly is excellent for him, considering what he does in his kit, but it is dispellable, so... Uh, matchup dependent but the nightblade one i do think is probably a very safe solid second option and i'll be honest probably is preferable for your average player this brings that triple hit which can capitalize on that chain apparel the absorption of 30 percent damage certainly fits in line with what he wants it's relatively cheap at 22 ap i don't like anything else here on the job but drain rush to me i think this is probably the best option for your average player now the team our review very niche just on the fact that it's a shield only a couple people can equip this it's not a bad effect though this is protect regen and some damage absorption to all of his abilities if you have that regen active uh, i'm not gonna lie as a third buff for duran i actually like this tmr option it just stinks that for how slow he is there's no agility on this either but these are some really noteworthy survivability metrics that he can take advantage of and the nice thing about the defense and spirit values here is that you can put defense or spirit trust stones on it and still get a lot of good value from it so honestly not a, a bad shield but very niche now, for the drop-based vision cards, there are a couple classes that Sword Knight goes excellently with. Book, in the last three vision cards alone, and the new one coming out soon, three in a row with Book, certainly great. Even Staff Black Mage has the bones to make it work. Fists is the other great one here. We have not seen any really great Fist units in, in a little while, but the synergy is absolutely there. And Sword Warrior is too. This one's a little more high-octane of an offense, so if you're going into Sword Warrior build, probably want to capitalize on that. But those three are definitely the best matchups for Sword Knight. But there are bones in place for some of the others. Axe, Staff, Black Mage, Sword, and Mage, and Gloves. There's a couple of vision cards connecting them that if you can also get some element vision cards in there, certainly very viable as well. But Sword Knight is a little harder to build the vision cards around. It's not impossible, but it's a little more difficult than average. Now for the unique equipment, his weapon, I'm kind of underwhelmed by this. I don't, I don't love this weapon, quite frankly. It's, in my opinion, best for freeing up some trust stone passive slots that a couple of these three out of the four of them are already ones that you likely should have on trust stone passive so this does give you opportunities to add different trust stone passives that being said i don't i don't love the values overall me personally i'm putting blood sword on him you're still getting a lot of uh modifier the man killer the initial ap the damage absorption is really the key thing though for the other equips i'm totally fine going with some of these heavy armors the maximilian armor the plate armor i do think the alex ring is still in play too given the accuracy one of the i guess rather unfortunate things about him as a character is a lot of tank units have some really good buff abilities or tp oriented abilities to make up for the fact that when they can't hit an enemy they'll be able to use this other kind of buff duran doesn't really have any of those kind of buffs in his kit unfortunately so that's why I, I don't think he's the kind of unit you can ditch the accuracy like some of these tanks can where some of these tanks they'll reuse their buff their hate buff they'll use something like chakra which is the healing for teammates and whatnot they might have tp abilities that have status effects on them uh, duran obviously has none of that regardless for the espers this is also very dependent on how you want to build them i think i would prefer one of these dps espers and let his bulk just kind of speak for itself with the honeycomb barrier and the shield and whatnot you could go for something with an element resistance like fire resistance water resistance whatever it might be but that is always more matchup dependent and for the tmrs again this is a tough one because he's as a range four unit actually a really good tmr candidate but because of his agility i might want to go for an agility tmr instead just so he doesn't get lapped too often for me though if i were looking for the most popular buff options from a tmr obviously keen blade comes to mind the bard's tmr with remove haste comes to mind even his own shield i think is a really serviceable armor tmr option the rest of them are as always really matchup specific quite frankly and turn order and buff order dependent now closing things out the trust stones here for me this is assuming you're using the blood sword if you're not using blood sword these trust stone recommendations are a little bit different you would drop the reaction block and the defense pen of 10 and you'd also drop the hp of 10 percent but for me these six on the right side are pretty standard in my opinion i don't think you really need anything else i think this is right down the middle of what he needs on the right side yes agility i probably wouldn't go for the accuracy just because I, I think he needs the agility points more than anything but 
honorable mention because accuracy can never really be bad. Uh, in terms of team building, I'm just stealing these slides from what I used from the quick hit review. There's a lot of good synergies between obviously mono win, but even some of the sword knight options. As I mentioned, these are the four, I think like my favorite rainbow potential teams if you're intermingling things, but my three favorite teams overall are the Shreka and Summer Resonant combination. This group of three is very well rounded but if you wanted to go for a mono wind iteration i think the dario one is very interesting too with the slash chain capabilities the grouping of the auras between duran and dario and then you don't need duran to be your tank you can make duran full offensive dps i do like that and even this bottom one when you mingle fire and wind there's a lot of good synergies between those three or four units that i really do like this team for the current state of the game also but that's the duran review overall this is a great character quite frankly there's not a lot to say like weaknesses obviously like agility comes to mind lack of 100 percent hit comes to mind lack of some of those tp abilities come to mind but there's a lot of good things too that i do think he does do well in the modern era of the game i think he's slightly more niche because of the sword knight category and where they are currently but overall for a free unit i i think he could be a lot worse i think he's better than some of the other recent free units we've gotten but that's everything for now. Good luck building him. If, the, if you're trying to use him, I would love to see results and thoughts. I'll try to do it myself so I can put out some videos about him. But per usual, comments, critiques, questions, criticisms, all of that and more in the comment section below. Love to get your feedback and uh, always like interacting with you all. But thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon.